Hi y'all, my name is Mr. Chow and welcome to Chow Time. This week's episode is on this Janot Ocean Rover. Uh, this one has the sand loom, blue bezel, it has a date window. It's uh, another homage, just like last week, but slightly more upscale than the Pagani design. The watch is going to be scored against a rubric with a uh, variety of objective categories such as the form and function of the case and bracelet, the dial and the movement, and then also a more subjective category in the brand's heritage and prestige. Then I take that total score and I apply a value multiplier that uh, helps us get a value score. I then take that va total score and the value score and I uh, rank them against all the other watches that I've reviewed. This will hopefully over time uh, help us find the best watch according to this rubric and also the best value watch, the best bang for your buck. At the end of the review, I give my completely subjective opinion based on my experiences, my emotional state, my connection to the watch, its character, how I'm feeling that day. You know, these are the kind of things that I feel like we ultimately make our watch purchasing decisions with anyway, so I share those as well. Before we begin looking at the rubric though, I want to first consider the purpose of the watch, why it exists, and its general design language. And this watch is a homage through and through. Uh, there are essentially no original components. It's all been taken from various eras of the Rolex Submariner uh, catalog, and so should be viewed from that perspective. So let's get to it. We'll begin with the form and function of the case and bracelet. This 316L stainless steel case very closely resembles the Rolex 5-digit Submariner case. I'll try not to bore you with the details on the similarities to the original and try to make this brief. The case brushing is of a pretty high quality, but not exactly the highest quality. Upon observation, it looks pretty good, but when you get into the macro shots, it does look a little bit grainier than the highest quality brushing. The polish though is pretty nice. The bezel has a really solid action to it and has very little back play. It also sounds crisp. The scalloped edge is well machined. The bezel is aluminum and painted blue with kind of a goldish color to the minute markers. There's nothing to complain about here. The slightly domed sapphire crystal is a surprising and nice touch, adding a tiny bit of flair to the design. It's coated in anti-reflective coating, which is also appreciated. Moving on, the bracelets and links fit well into the case. The mid-links are not articulating, and the Rolex-style clasp is well-machined. The spring mechanism, though, is already wearing out and feels spongy. A slight disappointment for a watch that is less than three years old. However, the on-the-fly micro-adjustment makes up for the tactile displeasure with functional bliss. The crown is well-sized and very easy to manipulate. The Genoa logo is engraved here, and it's the only place you'll see it when the watch is on wrist. The case back has some words engraved but really adds nothing to the form or function of the watch. I've yet to see any ongoing or consistent issues with quality control, which speaks to the quality control that the brand maintains. 6 out of 10 for form, 7 out of 10 for function. Let's move on to this piano black dial, which is quite gorgeous. I believe it's lacquered, but I'm not sure, and I've not heard back from their website. There is some text in the places the Submariner has text, and it's printed on pretty well. It's clean and crisp under macro observation. The indices are applied and also look nice, even when zooming in. 
Within the indices, it has what the company calls gold sand loom. It's applied evenly and glows quite well into the night, being legible at 3 a.m. in the morning. The same goes for the sword style hour hand and pencil style minute hand. There is a loom pip on the red paint second hand, adding visual interest and functionality in the dark, in case you are wondering if the watch is indeed working. The date window peers into a matching colored date disc, another example on the dial of attention to detail that does not go unappreciated to me. 7 out of 10 for form, 9 out of 10 for function. Let's move on to this 2824 ETA clone. Jeannot calls it the 7275. It beats at 28,800 beats per hour and has the standard 38 hour power reserve. There is a single complication, the date as noted earlier. It seems to have been finished, but the finishing doesn't seem to be of a very high quality and I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't last as long as the Swiss made 2824, although I have no data to back up that opinion. It came with a card claiming to be within certain time tolerances, but this watch is not keeping those time tolerances. It comes in at about 10 to 15 seconds fast per day. I might take it in to get a service just to get my watchmaker's opinion on this movement. If I do, I'll update the description below. Six and a half points for form, three for function. So far, I'll admit the watch is doing quite well on the rubric with a 38.5 out of 60. Let's finish off the rubric with uh, our most subjective category, the brand's heritage and prestige. There is a lot of controversy surrounding this watch brand. Last week, I reviewed another homage, and I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the parts come from the same factory. So why the controversy? Well, as I'm sure some viewers already know, there was an internet sleuth that allegedly uncovered some evidence suggesting that the owner of Jeannot was at one point participating in some less ethical business ventures. If this is true, I'm usually the kind of person who believes that people can change and would like to believe that this individual would like to leave that part of their past behind. And if that is true, then I personally don't have any problem with the brand or company. However, what makes the situation tricky is that to my knowledge, Jeannot has never come out and refuted any claims or apologized for any previous wrongdoing. And it's hard to forgive someone if they don't ever admit fault. I wouldn't expect anyone to incriminate themselves in order to ask for forgiveness, and I don't know if the rumors are true. But with the short history of the company, the dubious history it does have, and the generally negative sentiment among collectors, I can only give Jeannot a 2.5 out of 10 for brand, heritage, and prestige, bringing the total score to 41 out of 70. I believe this first model is still being made, but the prices on the second-hand market has been steadily dropping since the article came out a couple of years ago making claims against this brand. At the moment, it's hovering around $750 but the price could easily continue its downward trend. I'll use $750, which means the value multiplier will be 1.516. That brings the value score to 65.156, which is interesting to me. I think if I had reviewed this watch in 2018, I would have scored the brand higher, but the value multiplier would have been slightly lower. Even with the poor brand score, the watch comes in above the Seiko Alpinist in total score, placing it at number 14. For value, it comes in at number 4, straddling the line between value and luxury watches on the list. So that brings me to my personal opinion on this watch, and the first thing we'll have to address is the brand controversy. I stand by what I said earlier, if a person has changed, I want to honor that change. I don't want to continue punishing someone for previous indiscretions. And if you were to ask me, I, I, from 
what I read in that article, I would say that yes, there is some connection between Jeannot and uh, this counterfeit watchmaker that I will not name. And having said that, I don't want to support a company that sources its materials from a counterfeit watch part maker. Uh, and in general, I don't want to support that industry. So for me, it's, it's really hard for me to nail down exactly what I feel. Because even in making this video, I feel like I'm um, giving this industry, the counterfeit watchmaking industry, additional publicity, which uh, I would rather not do. Having said all that, when just looking at the watch, it is a very charming watch. I think it's a very high quality uh, Rolex homage. I really, really love the uh, sword style hands um, as opposed to the Mercedes style on the Oyster case. Um, the bezel action is really, really nice. I love this size crown. For my six and a half inch wrist, which is 16 and a half centimeters, uh, this 40 inch, I'm sorry, 40 centimeter case size is phenomenal. The uh, bracelet clasp, it's also, it's, it's spoiling me, being able to adjust on the fly like that. It's It's been quite difficult for me to go back to a bracelet that does not have that convenience. I generally don't like Fotina, so the, the, the gold uh, sand loom is not something I would usually enjoy on any other watch, but on this one, I just feel like it works. And so, really as a watch, there's really little for me to complain about. Um, I love that you're getting kind of this vintage vibe with modern technology. And that's something I've, I've just really enjoyed about the, the um, rebirth of the vintage watch uh, aesthetic, because I personally cannot bring myself to buy a vintage watch. And so being able to get that look, but with all the modern accoutrement is really, really nice. And I guess what it comes down to is that in a vacuum, if we could consider the watch outside of the brand, or if it was another brand, let's say that um, Nth were to have made this watch, it would, it would have scored higher and it would have a a much more positive um, connection, you know, uh, because uh, a conversation I had with a friend recently about watches and watch brands and the story that it tells, uh, this this watch is telling a story of, um, you know, <laughs> it's not a good story. I'll just say, I'll just put it that way. And so that that connection it's hard to discredit that and just look at the watch for what it is. However, if you could, I really, I really do like the watch. So does anyone disagree with any of the scores that I've uh, handed out? Is there anything about the rubric that you would like to see changed? Uh, is there any content that you would like to see me make? Please let me know in the comments below. I'll try to, uh, keep in mind as I make future watch purchases. Uh, thank you for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye y'all.